when I'm in the gym chilling with my brother Emmanuel, man, you know, a lot of times in the gym, you know, with some of the brothers, man, we have real conversations. And some of these conversations be so real sometimes, I say, man, we got to record this. We got to get this on recording because as black men, we could be talking about a lot of things, a lot of booties and shootings and stuff, but a lot of things, man, a lot of times in the gym, we get real spiritual and we get real personal. Because as black men, we go through a lot of stuff and we're taught as black men to keep this stuff within. A lot of us are suicidal. A lot of us are on the verge of doing a lot of things. And you'd be surprised, man, when just a, a just a simple conversation with another brother, man, can, can get you off that ledge, can bring you back. You know what I mean? You know, like, and I was telling my brother about the issues I had growing up and my mommy issues. You know what I mean? You know, as a, as a kid, being five years old, being raised by my mom, being spoiled as a baby, and then going to school at five. And then coming home and my mom ain't there, she's just gone. And I'm like, yo, where's my mom? And I'm asking my dad, I'm asking my grandma, I'm asking, and I came from that era 40 something years ago where you was to be seen and not heard, right? Nobody ever told me. So I grew up with a big void, right? And I was angry, I was, I grew up, I was abusive. I was all kinds of different things. I got into all kinds of trouble. Me and my father didn't get along. And um, they attributed, they said I had all kinds of things going on, but really I had mommy issues. Really, I had, um, but I didn't understand my father. Yeah. My father, he had his issues. He didn't have his father in his life. There were so many things being passed down generationally. And like I said, I, I've been through suicide twice. I've been through all these different things. And I'm thinking, well, maybe something wrong with me. I'm crazy. But then I get around other brothers and we talk. And I didn't run into you. And then you start talking your thing, right? Yeah, we find it We find it ironic that through our generations, I don't care if you was born in the 70s, the, the 80s, the 90s, we all have this similar story where we have this disconnect where it comes to the love of our families and hoping that we can get that love shared through our parents and our parents, right? But we didn't realize that the, the disconnect that our parents may have had raising us. Think about it. I think about my mom now, like, I'm young and I have a child right now, right, and a young son. But my mom didn't have time to think about being a mother at the, that young age and trying to still figure out her own life at this still age. Shit, I'm 34 and still trying to figure out my life at this age, right? My right. mom had three of us. When somebody say, hey, you want to have another kid? I said, how could you have one more than one kid at a time and not let this be there to see this kid grow? How can you water that plant every day, right? I worked for myself for 16 years. How can a parent not be in a home at least eight hours with their kid? See, these things that we take for granted, that the, the little time that we got is not enough. So it becomes stressful and depressing and we think and we blaming ourselves for all these traumas but not realizing oh, the devil got a hold on all of us that we can't say I forgive you and I if our parents for going through the things that you was telling me earlier. Yeah. It's just able to accept our fate and accept it and move forward. How I did, say how did like going when you was telling me like some of the things your mother said to you? Yeah, like my how mom, did it affect like talk, talk to her? Like, so my father was murdered by the police when I was thirteen and my father was the only child and People don't know, I was born between two blocks. So I could walk down to my father's house two blocks away, but I haven't seen him in 13 years. So I, I couldn't just walk down the street and know that was my grandmother right there. So my mom would always say this statement like, hey, you know, they didn't ever want you. They never wanted you. And she would say this over and over to me. And I, and, and, yeah, I'm masculine, I'm a man, but inside it was tearing me down, slowly tearing me down to the point where it broke me down. And I said, I, I said, I forgive. And I said to myself, let me ask you, did, did she ever tell you she didn't want you? In so many words, saying somebody don't want me is saying you don't want me. Yes. And, and yes. I don't care how we take yeah, that yeah, as perspective. Yeah, 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 yeah. If those words I don't want or they don't want is you, because you should say rather they didn't want you, I wanted you. And right. the, the words I was hoping to hear after she was saying that, y'all, y'all want. She didn't yourself. say those words to me. So I said, Mom, I love you, but I don't want to be like that. I don't want to be negative. I, I got a nonprofit. I'm teaching manners. How could you say those things to me? I'm your son. I'm trying my best. I try everything. I work for my son. I'm trying my best to stay a man and stay in character to be one. What did she say when you said these? When you, when you said these things to her? When I, my mom, I, she she got silent and hung up. You know what I mean? And I knew I, I didn't disrespect her. And when I was saying these things, because I would never disrespect my mother or my father. But so when I was saying it, I was saying it from love and, and my heart. And my mom knew that and hung up. But the, the good thing she called the next day. You know what I'm saying? So I know it got through somehow, but. I wasn't afraid of my own feelings and allowing my allow me to feel. Yeah. We, we, we don't I, have to always be I, hard. I, I, allowing ourselves yeah. to feel is the important thing. Something you know? I something I say, you know what I mean, when I'm in my bishop mode, um I went through like I said, I, I went through my things and I was angry at the world. I, and I didn't know I was angry. I, I, you know, but then I started to study, as I got older, I started to study families and understand the world more. 
and understand, well, my father was the best father he knew how to be. Like your mother was the best mother she knew how to be. Yeah. And we had to realize before we were born, our mothers were here. Yeah. And they came from somewhere. They went through some things. They, they Their trials and tribulations uh, uh, shaped yeah. yeah. and created yeah. the way that they were parent, right? And, and the things that was passed down generationally. And so what happened was I learned that, I learned that forgiveness, right? Forgiveness. And I'm gonna say something that's controversial, right? The people gonna look at it like, what? And I'm gonna tell you one day, right? The second time I committed suicide, I tried to commit suicide, right? I was on the brink of death, prior death. And I remember um, afterwards, I was sitting alone and I was going through it because I used to be real angry. I mean, I, I, I'm talking about, I wanted to be, I was murderous. I, 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 wanted, to, I, wanted, I wanted people to feel what I felt because I felt like when I was going through it, nobody ever came to save me. So why should I have remorse for you? Nobody came to ask you how you feel. Right, nobody ever cared, right? <laughs> other than my grandmother and, and God took her from me, right? And then one day, it clicked in my mind and I turned around, I'm going to say this to the camera. I said, Satan, I forgive you. And when I said that, I said, Satan, I forgive you. It seemed like everything just fell, boom. And what did people say when they say, Satan, I forgive you? They was like, uh, you know, when I say this to me, they're like, well, you forgive Satan? I said, yeah, I forgive you. Tell them why. I said, because the misery that you live in, that you want me to live in your misery. You want me to hear your voice. You want my ways to be your ways. And when I rejected it, <laughs> I said, I forgive you. I feel yeah. sorry for you. I forgive you. But I no longer going to see the world through your lens no more. Because I was conditioned through the teachings and not purposely through my father and my own family to see the world through his lens. Watch this. Because of their traumas. And it pushed me to that way. But I understood that the Christ said it only take one. So once I understood, I said, Satan, I forgive you. And I turned my back on and, and now you became irrelevant. Yeah, you still exist, but you were relevant to me. So now when I hear y'all, man, get out of here. See, now yeah, that don't even matter no more. Because I turned around and I turned around to the big to the big fella. I said, let my ways be your ways. Let my thoughts be your thoughts. Let my intentions be your intentions. Let my ambitions be your ambitions. Let my light shine as a beacon of hope. So now when I walk up, I don't even have to speak. My mere presence is a change. And once I understood this, right, I saw my family start to change. I saw my family start to come together in barbecues and sitting. Everybody having a good time now. Because I was the catalyst. I was the catalyst. It only took one. But I could I was living in the fall. I couldn't see past my own pain. I couldn't see past my traumas. But once I forgave Satan, I was able to walk away and, 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 and tell and hear God's voice. Because God was there talking the whole time, but Satan's voice was the loudest. Because Satan was saying, look what your mama did to yeah, you. Yeah. And, look, and remember, I'm going to tell you. Blame people. And, and, you to blame people. this. When you done wrong, when you're molested, you're abandoned, you're abused. You're abused by people that look like you because that's around you. But that's the way the system is set up, right? But once you understand that there's an architect there that's creating all that energy for it to happen. When you recognize that and you say, damn, you're real miserable. I don't want to be like you no more. Man, man, listen, I'm, I'm going to pray for you. I, I forgive you. I'm going to walk away from you. That's when my life changed because now he no longer had power over me. You. You're absolutely you right. Know Go ahead. You're absolutely right. If I can give you a few words or a few things that can help you in your life, the words though, I, it took it took me to the next level of like purity. You know what I mean? Look into yourself and realize I was taught responsibility growing up and we all thought it mean to take care. But I realized if it was easily just taken care of, every time I cried as a kid, my mom would ask me what is wrong. Every time I did this as a kid, I wouldn't get hit. So I had to realize as a father growing up, my respond my responsibility was my responsibility. My ability to respond to my child in a certain manner. My ability to respond to my family in a certain manner. My ability to respond to myself to understand. So what I did with myself that was good, write letters to your children. Tell your children how, how much you love them. Because the hours that you're putting in for somebody else a day, you, you ain't giving your, your kid those hours. Those 12 and 8 hours you're putting in, you ain't around your kid more than 4 hours a day. And I want you to realize they need your love and they need you right right there with them. And it's very important for your family to see success by you being there and, and directing it. So that's what I got to say to you. My name is Emmanuel City. Check out the Manners Foundation. I always appreciate my OG G right here. And he's always been good to me and teaching me loyalty and teaching me to find things in life. And I appreciate that. And I want y'all to understand, know who you are. Know who you are and know who you're becoming. 
in order for you to get to the understanding of what I'm talking about and what my brother Emmanuel is talking about in this video, you have to first know who you are. Even if you are a bad person at this point in your life, know who you are, own it, and now we're gonna work on making the change. Because once you can recognize who you are, you can recognize where you're going. I had to recognize who I was in order to understand, say, I don't work for you no more. I don't work for you no more. And you know what? And I forgive you. I forgive you. So now that's the metaphor for saying those that's in your life that might have done you wrong. I forgive you. Because I don't want to live in that no more. You don't want to be like the ones that's being nasty to you. So you forgive them. Yeah. They don't even know yet. Because when you know, you don't need a middleman for you and you and your, your Lord. That's the thing I'm saying. You don't need a middleman for you and your Lord. Let's go straight up to the top. You, in closing, you want to break generational curses? You want to break generational curses? Start to recognize who you, which part you play in it. And recognize and know who you are when you see your reflection in the mirror. Because I say this in closing. I say this in closing. We, we had a conversation before we walked over here. And he told me, I told him some things about my mama. He told, he told me some things about his mama. I'm gonna tell you something that's powerful. I understood that my mama had traumas, right? And when she looked at her reflection in the mirror, she didn't like what she seen. There was a large portion of her that she didn't like. When I came through my mama, she loved me, but I was a reflection of her. So some of the things that she didn't like when she saw me, I carried that spirit as well. And I passed some of that off to my son. When I, because I didn't like my reflection at times. I didn't realize that part of me didn't like my children sometimes. And I treated them in ways that I shouldn't have treated them. Because I didn't like myself. But when I understood who I was, and I began to love me, the inner me, and what I was reflecting out, I truly saw my, the reflection when I saw my son. Because I understood that I was the son of the Most High. When I understood that I was the son of, of the Most High, I was able to see my reflection. And when I saw my son, I seen myself. And I love me now. So it taught me to really love my son yeah. even more and love my brother. And that's How can I love yep. my brother or my son when I don't even love my own reflection? See, that was powerful. I learned how to be, a, I'm learning how to be a better father to my sons because I now love what I see when I look at myself in the mirror and I can be honest about it. <laughs> because when I saw my sons, I saw my reflection. And psychologically, I didn't like me. So I'm always grumpy. Whoa, what do you want? Oh, uh, now that's starting to discipline. Because I understood that I have a father that loves me. Unconditionally. Oh, man. Come on, man. I always tell everybody, we wealthy for real. We wealthy. We were chosen to be here. If anybody ever say you want not to be here, God chose you to be here. As many that haven't, as many that's gone. What I'm going to say, he left the whole world for you to decide what you want to do. That's why you're wealthy. So go out there and go get yours. Be honest. Be fair. Treat yourself how you want others to treat you. And all this I'm going to leave you with, okay? And all love. Blessings to you and your families out there. Thank you again for allowing me to speak to you. Self-love, self-love, that's where it starts at. A lot of people watch these videos and I hope that this video can reach somebody and it, it, it can touch your spirit. I hope that this video can 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 get to a place where it helps you navigate uh, to the places that you need to be. It could be life-changing for you. I hope that this is a word that can that can go through us that that can be a spiritual upliftment for those that's going through some things at a trying time. You may be on the verge of suicide. You may be on the verge of losing your family. You may be on the verge of losing your children. This can be right here the connecting piece to the puzzle that you may have needed. The word that you have a word spoken word that you have needed right there at the, at, at the allotted time for change. So listen, I'm I'm, I'm on assignment. And I'm doing, and this is therapy for me, for me to be a better father, for me to be a better husband, for me not to pass this down to my sons and my daughters that they may be different. And now we may bring about a different change into the atmosphere, into the world. Remember, I love y'all. Till the next time, peace.